Welcome, I'm Eileen Crane, and I am the founding winemaker of Domaine Carneros, and as I put it, the chief bubblehead here. I've been here 33 years, um, and I've enjoyed almost all of it. Of course, there are those moments, but in general, it's been a fabulous run. I didn't start in the world of sparkling wine, though, at Domaine Carneros. Before that, I worked um, for or at uh, a couple of other sparkling houses. And when I moved out here in 1978, um, my first job was as a tour guide, but I was aiming for a job in the lab to get started in the winemaking. And in my, that first job, which was at Chandon, um, they had vineyards all over um, Napa in the nor North Coast, but the grapes that were always the most coveted and the ones that I most appreciated were the grapes that came from the Carneros area. At that time, it was the area, it wasn't yet an appellation, but I could see the quality of the grapes and um, far surpassing um, any of the other areas that fruit came in from. I subsequently um, built Gloria Ferrer, and um, they had vineyards also there, some of them, some of their vineyards from Carneros, and again, appreciated the quality. So when I was hired in 1987 to build Domaine Carneros um, and make the wines, uh, start the, the visitor center and all the other parts of putting together a winery, the only wine vineyard that Domaine Carneros has was the vineyard that immediately surrounded um, the winery. Claude Tatinger, early on when he came to visit Domaine Carneros, he said to me, when you get a chance, when you see a good quality vineyard site, only the best, we would like to purchase it. Owning your own grapes and being able in charge of how you grow the grapes and the quality you can produce is foremost in being able to produce the finest wines. I took that to heart and over the years, I have acquired for Domain Carneros five other vineyards beyond the estate. Um, the first one we call Pompadour um, and then Little by little, I added additional vineyards, and they're all about three to three and a half, four miles away from the winery. They're all very close in a tight circle in terms of um, vineyards where they're in this region. And the Carneros Appalachian is a very special one. Something um, you may not know, Carneros is one of the oldest actual AVAs. Um, there, we were the 10th AVA, now there's a plethora of them, but Domaine Carneros was part of um, the effort to get the Carneros AVA. And it's, the AVA is based not on political chicanery, not on um, just uh, political lines. Carneros Appalachian is based upon the history of the region and um, the consistent soils and the consistent climate in the Carneros. The Carneros is the southern portion of both Napa and Sonoma Valley. So, um, but the Carneros is one appellation. Um, there's a county line, but we choose to ignore that um, because we are one appellation. The Carneros appellation actually um, is the second oldest region north of San Francisco um, to grow grapes. The very first region was right around the town of Sonoma because that's where General Bet Vallejo, um, the last Mexican governor of Northern California, um, lived, created, established the town of Sonoma um, and governed from there. So there was there were vineyards planted early on. There was a mission. Of course, if you have a mission, you need to have um, wine. Uh, not to mention, mention you might just want to have wine for a good glass. 
Um, but the second oldest region was the Carneros, and General Vallejo raised his sheep in the Carneros region. Um, there's an area called Rincon de los Carneros in, an old, in old maps, and Carneros means sheep. And so when you pick up a bottle of Domaine Carneros, you think, what is that little double ram's head? Well, it's the Carneros that represents us. Um, General Vallejo uh, had a very interesting history, very, very flexible, flexible man. And at one point, Vallejo, the city of Vallejo, was uh, one day actually, um, was the capital of California. Um, it moved around a bit when they were making decisions on where the capital would be. Uh, but eventually, uh, General Vallejo became part of the California legislature after he um, uh, escaped from the Californios who arrested him and took him away and announced that um, Northern California was no longer a part of Mexico. It was a part of the United States. So General Vallejo, that's where he started growing his grapes. The second oldest region in Northern California for grape growing is the Carneros. But when did Carneros get its actual ABA? Andre Chelichev, who's considered the father of modern American winemaking, um, he was a white Russian, a very short man, about maybe 4'10", but boy, this man had a will. And if you ever get a chance to read his story, it's fascinating. But he was very interested in wine. He was the leader in quality wine um, in California post-prohibition. And Andre Chelichev worked for Beaulieu Vineyards. And surprisingly, Andre Chelichev put pressure on um, the ownership of Beaulieu to go after the appellation of Carneros to get an official, official ABA. Now, Beaulieu's up in Rutherford, so it seems odd that a winery based in Rutherford would go after a Carneros appellation, but it did. And Andre Chelichev thought it would be absolutely the best place in California to grow Pinot Noir uh, grapes and to make Pinot Noir wine. In fact, he says that the best Pinot, he says the best wine he ever made, the best wine he ever made in his whole career was a Pinot Noir from the Carneros. High praise from Andre Chelichev, the father of American, modern American winemaking. So we return to Domaine Carneros and Domaine Carneros, um, as you know, we um, little by little acquired some of the best vineyards in the Carneros, which um, we grow ourselves, that we manage ourselves. And having done that, we've been over the years able to move more and more towards estate grown. And the, the Pinot Noir that um, you see, me, see before me, this was first produced um, in 1990, excuse me, Yep, 1993, it was that long ago, hard to believe, but 1993, um, we produced our first estate Pinot Noir, and it was 100% of the grapes that came from the Carneros. Um, and if you've tasted this wine, you know how just how delicious it is. People sort of say, hmm, this is just truly wonderful. Um, and I get this repeatedly, they sort of unexpected or don't expect that from a sparkling house that the Pinot Noirs would be as good as they are, but they sure are. So if you don't believe me, open a bottle and try it. Um, and the, of course, the, the Carneros grapes, our Carneros vineyards, go into our sparkling wines as well. Um, and this is, um, we proudly carry the designation Domain Carneros. Our only appellation is Carneros. Um, and, and our grapes come 100% from the Carneros Appalachian. So Appalachian is a very important marker and why is Carneros such a great region for um, producing top quality grapes? It's a cool region one. If you go up into Napa Valley, you go through 
region one, region two, region three. Um, it gets warmer up valley. Now that's counterintuitive, but the Carnero sits on top of the San Pablo Bay. And so we get a lot of the marine influence from uh, the bay and it keeps us very cool in the summer and very moderate in the winter. If you go up to Calistoga, the northern part of Napa, for instance, it's quite cold in the winter. Not particularly cold if you're from Minnesota, but certainly cold by the local um, areas. And we're much warmer in the southern part and we're much cooler in the summer. It's much more consistent climate. You might think of it as Hawaii. You think you're gonna go on a trip to Hawaii, someone says, why don't you join me for Hawaii? You don't say, is it winter or summer? You say, where's the plane? Um, because they have winter and summer, but it, the temperatures vary uh, far less than uh, many other places because of um, the influence of the ocean. And that too affects us in the Carneros. So we have a very long growing season in the Carneros as a result of being, um, the, having the climate being moderated by the San Francisco Bay and the, and the winds that come through the Petaluma and the Gap. So we have a very long growing season, which means um, the vines grow and their grapes, ripen their grapes um, slowly and pick up more flavor. Um, they don't rush to sugar, but they um, have a long time, long hanging time um, to get intensity and deep fruit character. The Pinot Noir that we make um, is 100% Pinot Noir. We all know that there are a lot of Pinot Noirs out there that have had things like Syrah to them because many Americans, not all, not all by any means, like heavy wines or heavier wines. And we've been very um, pure about this, that we're 100% Pinot Noir. And people who really love Pinot Noir love our Pinot Noirs because we don't want it to be what it's not. It's not meant to be a heavy white wine. It's meant to be an, an elegant, rich wine, full palate, full pa uh, finish, but not something heavy. It's, and it's not heavy or tannic, um, but it's a very well aging wine. Uh, so the, the Carneros region, the Carneros really produces superlative fruit, both for Pinot Noir and for sparkling wine. One thing that people don't realize about the Carneros is it's a small appellation. And if you look at the North Coast or the areas north of San Francisco, best known for Pinot Noir is Carneros, Russian River, and Sonoma Coast, those three appellations. And sometimes you don't see Carneros mentioned as often, and that's because out of 100% of all the wineries in Carneros, Russian River, and Sonoma Coast, Carneros wineries make up only 10%. We're a smaller region. Um, and so we, there are very few wineries in Carneros relative to the big regions of Russian River and Sonoma Coast. So, um, Russian River is four times our size, Sonoma Coast is five times our size in the number of wineries producing. So that's an oddball image, but Carneros is a small, selective um, area in historic region um, and a very committed winemakers down here. As you know, Domaine Carneros is just about in the middle between Napa and Sonoma, um, but our grapes come from three and a half to four miles away max. Um, and so we're very lucky along those lines to have our fruit so close to us. We don't ship our wines out of, or our grapes. We don't ship grapes out of Northern Sonoma County. We don't ship grapes out of Calistoga. We don't ship grapes out of Mendocino or from the Central Coast or furthest apart. So especially when you look for a sparkling wine, of course, it's more obvious an appellation on a still wine like our estate Pinot Noir. Um, but many times um, in sparkling wine, people think the appellation is not important. Why would that be? We know that great wines of the world have an appellation, have a real ABA appellation. 
And you could think of this in, um, for instance, if think of uh, Chateau Rothschild, um, Chateau Mouton Rothschild. Um, they don't uh, sur source fruit um, from all over um, their region. They don't source fruit from all of France. Uh, Romani Conti doesn't source all over Burgundy, for instance. They source from a very, from a particular appellation. So, um, Carneros, Domaine Carneros, like that. We are 100% from an appellation. We're not all over the place. And that's something really important to look at um, the appellation on a sparkling wine as much as on a still wine. And a number of people who make Method Champagne was use appellations like California or North Coast. Um, and these people own vineyards, but they don't own the majority of their vineyards. They grow grapes um, or they buy grapes. And you never have the same quality of grapes that you grow for your own production as you do when you buy it. Growers have a very different take on what's important to them, like the level of crop. They, make, they get paid by the tons they deliver, and as a result, they have a real, um, shall we say, inspiration to increase the volume. Whereas we, we produce for our own wineries, for our own, excuse me, for our own wines um, exclusively. And so we are, in 2020, we are 100% estate, 100% Carneros, and 100% from little clustered area right around the winery where our vineyards are. Thank you for uh, listening to me today. And I just, before I sign off, I just wanted to, su to suggest to you um, that the best place to savor and survey the Carneros uh, region uh, is best enjoyed on our terraces. So um, please, your next trip out to the West Coast or to Napa Sonoma, um, think of us, make a reservation, come and visit and savor um, the beauty of the region around us. And look forward to seeing you um, at Domain Carneros.